Hello, welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick, and this is our review of the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Pacer. So the Supercomp Pacer is the first in a new line of Supercomp shoes that we've got our hands on here at Run Testers HQ. Uh, this is the lower stack racing shoe in the range built for kind of events from 5K to the half marathon, New Balance say. There's also gonna be a very, very super high stack training shoe called the Supercomp Trainer. It's also gonna be the Supercomp Elite, which will be the successor to the RC Elite 2 and sit as the marathon racing shoe in the range with a much higher stack of cushioning, whereas the Pacer will sit below it as the best option for short distances. It's pretty expensive. It's 160 pounds in the UK or $150 in the US, but it's very light. It comes in at 199 grams or seven ounces exactly in my UK size nine. And um, we haven't got the official stack height listing, but I've seen it listed online at around 28 millimeters with an eight millimeter drop from heel to toe. This is a full carbon shoe. There's a full length carbon plate in there sandwiched in a couple of layers of New Balance's fuel cell cushioning, which is very soft in some shoes and they kind of tweak the formula to change that in others. This is a slightly firmer feel, I'd say, than in things like even the Rebel, but mainly something like the RC Elite 2, which is a very soft feel to it. Got a very, very thin mesh upper, you know, barely there feel with almost no cushioning on the tongue and then a little bit around the heel. But in general, everything on top is designed to keep stuff the shoe as lightweight as possible. So you've got a real stripped back racing shoe feel to it. And then the same goes for the outsole, really. There's hardly any rubber at all at the back, just those two thin strips. And then, you know, a bit more around the forefoot, but a lot of the places you can see the rubber sits flush with the outsole. So you're not gonna be expecting incredible durability and certainly try and keep this on the road if you can. But, you know, it's an outsole that's gonna give you good grip in terms of turning corners, thanks to that forefoot coverage, but it's not one that's really designed to last hundreds and hundreds of miles. One last thing to say is that our samples for this review were provided by Pro Direct Running. Uh, we're not affiliated with them in any way. And as always, the review is completely unbiased, but we wanted to say a big thank you to them for providing the samples for the review so we could get out and test the shoe. So Fit For Me has been absolutely spot on here in my UK size eight. I would say go through to size based on my experience. My kind of experience of running the shoe hasn't really altered from my kind of first run in terms of the fit. I think you get a good amount of space up in the toe box. I think you get a good, nice kind of feel on the kind of midfoot and, you know, hold there. Um, and this upper is all about keeping the weight down, but ultimately I do think it is a comfortable upper to wear overall. You've got these nice kind of skinny laces, which I think, you know, get you a nice kind of lockdown kind of feel. This kind of thin tongue, which you know I found sat really comfortably on the top of my foot. And then you've got this kind of light amount of padding here, which I think is suitable for the types of runs and the kind of distances that you should be covering in this shoe. So for me, if you're gonna go for this shoe, I would say go true to size. And my kind of narrow feet, in my, my UK size eight was kind of pretty much spot on. Fit for me in the Fuel Cell Super Comp Pacer is true to size. Definitely want size up or down in this shoe. I found it very comfortable. It's actually fairly roomy at the front, but not to the point where I would um, change the size that I'm buying. So yeah, I'd, I'd stick true to size in the uh, Pacer. Comes to fit, uh, I would say these shoes are tight. They are very locked in, racing shoe style fit. Uh, probably a little bit too short for my taste actually in the front of the shoe, especially if you're looking at this for races of a half marathon distance. Uh, especially my right foot, I felt that uh, I was probably a little bit too cramped up top. When I did a kind of 10K race in the shoe, I could start to feel a bit of rubbing at the front there. So there is a potential, I think, to go half a size up, uh, especially as it is a very streamlined kind of narrow fit around the rest of the shoe anyway i like that i've got a narrow foot and the fit is really good for me around the midfoot and heel in my normal size but i probably could use just a little bit more space up top so i've used the super comp pacer for a few kind of hard fast sessions in my training and also a 10k race and i've enjoyed using it but probably my overriding feeling uh, with this shoe is that most runners aren't really going to need it or go for it given the quality of higher stack carbon shoes out there already i started with a longer progression running it at first going from seven minute miles down to sub six minute miling and, and i enjoyed the shoe for that it actually was more comfortable than i expected it's has got a fairly firm ride, but when I was cruising along at the start of that run and then in the kind of cool down on the way home, uh, it still felt really comfortable. Like it's not the highest stack shoe in the world, but Fuel Cell is a very comfortable foam. And even with a plate, I think you're getting enough protection there that your legs aren't getting too beat up over distances that end up around 15K in total, I think that workout. So yeah, that was pretty impressed with it. And I took it neck then into a race, uh, my local club race, which is 10K on mixed terrain, fairly hilly 10K. and. Actually, it was a kind of the perfect race for this, although it's not great when you're on the trails in terms of outsole durability. It's a very nimble, agile shoe because it is so lightweight. And I feel like sometimes, you know, carbon shoes lose a bit when you are moving from trails to kind of 
gravelly roads and that kind of thing and uphills the fact this is such a light shoe was great you know really easy to pick up the feet as you're trying to get up that hill in a race um but then i think the classic thing with these low stack shoes i think you lose a little bit uh to the high stack shoes when you're on good roads long straights downhills that kind of thing you're getting a bit more bounce and propulsion from shoes with more foam and this feels more akin to a racing flat with a little bit of a super shoe boost. Uh, and that is great. On twisting courses, like I say, on mixed terrain, I think it's great. It's nimble, fast, and you're still getting a bit of a propulsion from the plate and the foam when you are on those long straights, but it isn't quite as effective, I think, as a high stack shoe. Uh, and then the last session I did with it, I was trying to put that to the test, was a long session where I was running five two mile reps. I did the first two reps in the New Balance shoe running kind of 530 per mile average pace. And then the last three sets in the Adios Pro 3, and I uh, slowed down a bit to 540 per rep just because I was feeling it a bit um, and it was very noticeable the difference in the shoes like this felt very light really nice pickup you know really racy really aggressive feel to it then you put on the Adios Pro 3 which is not my favorite of the high stack carbon shoes so far in testing but it just felt so much more bouncy and cruisy and kind of powerful and um, just locking into a pace in those shoes just felt a little bit more effortless whereas if this is a bit more akin to a you know a classic racing flight you're getting more ground feel and a more aggressive ride which is nice but when it comes to sustaining paces over longer distances it's just a little bit easier in those big bouncy super shoes with the bigger stack so yeah overall i've enjoyed running quick in it i think it's something i would probably stick to using for very short stuff and short reps training reps that kind of thing it's a great fun shoe to use for that but overall i'm not sure if the performance is there to justify having this alongside a high stack shoe and then one last note would be uh one advantage of it to being such a tight fit was my wife was able to use it on holiday when she'd left her shoes somewhere but she took it on some kind of gravelly track and uh, we did get a bit of a puncture in the outsole in the kind of the exposed foam in the outsole um and that does kind of show you know it's, it is going to be quite a delicate outsole and you've got to be a little bit careful with it so in terms of my run test i run on road i've done track sessions in this i've gotten the treadmill on this as well and that's kind of been a mixture of things so 5k 10k you know kind of runs um i've done some interval track sessions with these as well and i have tried to go a little bit longer so beyond 10k where i think this kind of maxes out in terms of how you'd want to use this shoe now on the short stuff it felt great i you know i feel you know mainly because of that fuel cell uh, midsole you're getting here you get a nice bounce in that ride and even though you're getting kind of a lower kind of feel in terms of the run and it's got some snap in the shoe it definitely has so you know that's where I felt it, it, it kind of excelled now when I tried to go a little bit longer in the shoe you know I almost wanted a bit more of that cushioning there or maybe a bit more structure in terms of that upper and support um, when my legs are starting to tire a little bit I almost kind of need that extra now this is coming from someone that's has run in kind of low profile shoes and minimal shoes but i think in terms of what this shoe can offer and what, where it best sits it felt like the 5k you know and they kind of track sessions is where they they they, they felt the best best utilized um based on my testing so and i also look at the outsole as well i'm starting to see some wear here as well particularly at the heel there's a little bit at the front of the shoe as well it's mainly at the heel though um so from a durability point of view, I don't think it'd be one that you'd, you know, you'd want to use as a kind of workhorse daily trainer, maybe stick to those sessions where you know you're going to run a bit quicker, maybe run for a, a smaller amount of time. And that's where you can kind of most benefit and max out in terms of what's in this shoe. So yeah, overall, really enjoyed running in this shoe. I do think it's better suits those kind of short distances, 5K, 10K, when you're running at your quickest or trying to, you know, pick up or work on your speed. That's where I think it's best suited. And that's kind of where I felt it, you know, most worth worthy or kind of valuable in terms of my running time so i've done about 40k in the super comp pacers so far and that has varied between um five to ten k road runs and a couple of track sessions as well what i've found about super comp pacer is that it is a nice shoe um i'm not used to using lower drop shoes these days i know it's not you wouldn't really class it as a really low drop shoe but uh, in comparison to something like the Vaporfly or the A6 Metaspeed Sky, shoes like that, it is a noticeable noticeable difference. And, and, and I'm not used to it these days. I've not, I've not run in a lot of lower drop shoes for a while. Um, what I would say about the performance levels of it, when I've used it for track, I've really enjoyed it. Those shorter, faster uh, interval sprints, I think it's very good at those. And I can definitely go at my top pace with this with no problems at all. When I start doing longer distances in it, so when I'm doing... Uh, park running it or something like that and I'm, I'm trying to maintain a pace for the full 5k it's fine I, I think it, it can almost compete with things like the Vaporfly 2 for me but I find that 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 lower drop really I do notice it when it gets to the first maybe it gets to 3k or something like that 
um, I just notice that there's less cushioning in it. And I don't like that feeling very much. I prefer to have that cushioning. I prefer to have that efficient bounce coming in from the shoe, which I don't think you get from this. I also don't really notice the carbon plate in it. And there's shoes that I've tested in the past that don't have a carbon plate that have a lower drop. And I feel pretty much the same thing from those shoes. I don't think there's many performance benefits to this shoe. I just think it's a nice, light, low drop shoe. The ba main benefit that you're getting from this is just the fact that there's not a lot of shoe on it. So you can run faster um, and it's not really taking up too much weight or anything like that. Um, but that's it really. I don't think the carbon plate does a lot. I, I definitely don't feel the carbon plate in this shoe. It doesn't feel more efficient. And I don't think I, I can run faster in this shoe than I could do in a low drop shoe that didn't have a carbon plate. I think the foam is very good, but I don't think there's a lot of it. So the gains from that are minimal as well. Um, and to be honest, I, I I just think it's a very niche shoe. Uh, uh, things like the Vaporfly, A6 Metasphere Sky Plus, you can use those for everything. I I still think those are better shoes for my track training as well. And they can do all, all my racing up to the marathon distance. This, If I bought this, I would only use it for track training and maybe shorter distance training. But even then, I'm more likely to go for one of my tempo training shoes, maybe even something like the Hocker Mac, uh, Hocker Mac 4 or 5. Um, so I think it's a nice shoe, but I just think it's a very limited range in terms of what it does. I have enjoyed running in it, um, but not to the point where I'd say this is an amazing shoe that you definitely have to buy. So my verdict on the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Pacer is that it's good if you want a lower drop shoe for shorter distance runs and it's probably meant to go up to about 10k distance i wouldn't go up to 10k distance in it just because i want a little bit more cushioning i think it'd be fine to do that i just i just wouldn't be my first choice um i'd probably say that this is a good shoe if you do track training if you do shorter distance reps um and you like a low drop you're more used to a low drop if you're a more conventional runner who does most of their speed b training or has done in the past in a lower drop shoe this is probably quite a nice welcome treat because it's something you're used to if you're a runner that's more used to running all of your races and your speed training in a high stack carbon plate shoe, I think this is limited and I don't think you're going to get the, the benefits out of it that you would from those other shoes. It It's probably a good shoe to have for track, but then again, there's loads of other shoes that are that are more versatile. So um, I'd say that the only reason I'd buy this shoe is if it was about £80, pounds, £90, pounds, and it was a cheap, lightweight track option um, that wasn't expensive, I'd probably buy it for those. But for the price, I definitely wouldn't go for this just because I don't think it's got many uses other than those shorter distance sprints and um, track reps. But yeah, other than that, I, I just think it's a little bit overpriced for what it is and it doesn't really even need the carbon plate to deliver what it's doing. So I think the Super Comp Pacer is, is a good shoe. I think five years ago, we've been going crazy for this shoe. It's the best like long distance, short distance racing shoe ever made. But in today's landscape, I just don't know if it's really necessary when you have got such fantastic, lightweight, higher stack shoes that give you a little bit more bounce and propulsion. I think with the New Balance's lineup, it maybe makes a bit more sense because the RC Elite is such a big, soft, towering shoe that really does excel mostly over the long distances. But that said, even over short distances and short reps in the RC Elite too, uh, I found it really good and the extra cushioning there I think is a plus if you're not feeling unstable at any point. You obviously do get a bit more stability in the shoe when hammering around tight corners, that kind of thing, and it's very agile on that kind of mixed terrain course I was talking about in the race I did, but I just don't think it's 100% necessary and it, at 160 quid, you know, it's a lot of money for a shoe that I think just doesn't outperform uh, a full carbon shoe. You can get full carbon shoes now for around that price in sales and yes i'm struggling to see the justification of picking up the pacer as well i kind of think with these shoes these low stack shoes things like this and the takumi sen and the nike street fly you almost want to be seeing them for more like 100 120 pounds it's obviously a big ask but for them to be really picked up as you know a lightweight training shoe and for short races that you could justify spending the money on as well as a carbon shoe i think they need to be a fair bit cheaper uh, the street fly is obviously a little bit cheaper but the others are I think cl price close to full carbon shoes, which just do deliver better performance in my opinion. Uh, then when it comes to comparing it to those two shoes, um, I still think the Takumi Sen is the outstanding option within this low stack racing bracket. Uh, it's a bit more comfortable than a New Balance. And I've enjoyed using it for longer distances as well. And I think you get probably a similar level of drive and propulsion from the Light Strike Pro foam combined with the rods as you do from fuel cell in the plate here. I prefer the New Balance to the Street Fly. I'll say that Street Fly is a really nice, fun training shoe, but Without a plate in there, I find it kind of too soft um, to really 
you know run hard in for long stretches in races so although i quite like the street flying it is a lot bit cheaper than this so i think the performance is higher from something like the new balance or the takumi sen because of the extra technology in the midsole there providing a bit more punch overall and you know another interesting addition to this low stack category i still don't think it's entirely necessary as a category but if you are looking for a lightweight kind of grounded fast racing shoe then the pacer is there i think it's probably the most akin to an old school racing flat out of the trio including the street fly and the takumi sen so if you are hankering for that feel but if you want a little bit of a boost from a foam and a plate then it's, it's a really solid option but put it this way if you've already got the vapor fly there's absolutely no need to go out and get this i think you're getting a better performance from that shoe over any distance so my verdict on the super comp pacer is that you know, first and foremost, I, you know, this is my first experience running in one of these kind of low profile racer shoes. And from that point of view, I've really enjoyed running in it. I definitely do think it's best suited maxing out to kind of 10K. I think the shorter kind of interval stuff that I did in it, I think the kind of 5K quicker runs I did in it, that's where it felt best. And if, you know, if you're looking for a shoe like that, I think this is a good option. Now, if you're looking for something that can give you that kind of feeling of you know you know when you want to go a little bit quicker those kind of short distances but you also want something that can kind of push you to go a little bit further or feel comfortable to run longer in then there's better shoes out there i think to do that in you know more versatile shoes ultimately i would say um and you think about the price as well you know this is pretty expensive for a shoe that you know pretty much is dedicated to that kind of shorter stuff or feels best suited to that short stuff so if you are looking for a, a low stacked racer, um, I do think this is a good one. Uh, you know, it's the only one that I have tested out of the kind of the Nike and the Alias um, options that are out there as well. Um, if you're looking for a shoe that can work well at those short distances, you know, when you want to run a bit quick, but you also want to maintain that speed over longer distances as well, I don't think it kind of fits that profile. But I've enjoyed running in a shoe overall. It's just whether, you know, I'll find a space for it in my rotation when there's other shoes more versatile out there that can work across a range of speeds, a range of different sessions, where I don't think you get that with a super comp paint. How's it, guys? That's our review of the New Balance Super Comp Pacer. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Are you excited by these low stack shoes? Are you using them? Do you prefer them to the high stack shoes? Uh, please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we will see you next time on the channel.